If you hood educated, I'm glad you made it. Allow me to unfold my knowledge, wisdom, and understanding from a hood brother's point of view to all of you here, there, and everywhere. Now check me out. No bond. That is what a Hillsborough County judge ruled for the three suspects arrested in connection with killing a rapper outside of a Tampa hotel back in June. Police say Alicia Andrews, Isaiah Chance, Sean Gaithright, and Rashad Murphy followed Julio Fulio while he was celebrating his birthday here in town. The judge ordered that all three suspects will be held without bond until trial. Come on, judge. Don't do him like that, bro. No bond. You mean to tell me, Judge, that you you don't you don't want them boys and, and, and that girl to get out of jail? You want them to stay in jail until the trial is over with? Just give them a million dollar bond, Judge. Show them some type of mercy. Come on now, you don't do them like that, right? But no, this is what happens when you get into that criminal judicial system. They can lock you up like that without a bond and let you sit in the county jail until the trial is over with. What we got to understand and what they got to understand right now is that they might not ever see freedom ever again. It is over with. Over with. The closest that they might get to freedom ever again is looking outside a window. Being on the yard, looking in the sky. Because when you're on them prison yards, you don't get to see the houses and the cars and stuff. You don't get to see life. All you get to do is see the birds flying by and planes and helicopters and stuff like that. You don't get to see no life. So... They got to realize right now, I'm talking about they in themselves right now, like, damn, I ain't got no bond. The judge want me to sit here until the trial. If I lose the trial, I leave this county jail and go straight to prison, possibly for the rest of my life. Cold-blooded demonstration. I'm talking about some they last days of freedom is when the time that they got arrested, when they got locked up. All of them. Come on, man. Like, this right here is sad, but at the same time, it's like this is what happens. All you youngsters need to understand, like, this is real life. And if you live in that life, if you game banging and you running around here shooting, stabbing, killing, fighting, and all that old type of stuff, uh, you are not exempt from what's happening to all four of these peoples. You are not exempt from none of that. That can be you. That is your future. That will possibly happen to you, just like it's happening to them. You are viewing it. You seeing it. You hearing it. Learn from it. Learn. Oh, this is the this is the stuff that they did to get there. This is what they did to get into the county jail, to be charged with murder, and to have no bond. This is what they did. These are the steps that they took. Oh, okay, then well then I don't want to take them steps. No, I'm not doing that because that can, nope, I'm not doing that because that, uh, no, definitely not doing that because that can lead me there too. You see, learn from this. Don't be them. Be better than them. Now, here it is. I'm talking about these are kids. At the end of the day, they're, they're young adults and all that, but these are kids. And their life can be over with. The man said no bond. And he has good reason not to give them a bond. Whenever you lay up here and shoot up a person's car 31 times, kill him and then shoot three other people in the car? Come on, man. I mean, like, these are terrorists. If they would do that to Julio Fulio, they would do that to the um, anybody. Anybody that get them mad enough for them to do what they did to Fulio, they'll do that to anybody. 
All you got to do is make these type of people mad and upset. A bruise their ego. That's it. That's all you got to do. And they would do you the same way that they did Julio Fulio. So do they deserve to be in the community? If you ask me, no. Uh-uh. I can't agree with that. Even though I was a part of that lifestyle and I used to do the crazy... You understand? Like I was... Uh, I was gone up there and they locked my ass up. They locked me up. So do they deserve? No, I, I can't I can't agree with that. I can't agree with that type of activity going on in the hood. I'm talking about from both ways, from Julio uh part, KTA, or uh ATK or 1200 gang or just gangs, period. I just don't agree with that type of conduct in the black community in the white community, in the Latino community, in the Native American community, in the Asian community, just the community, period. Like, we don't deserve to be around that type of stuff. Our kids shouldn't have to be around that type of stuff. But here it is. This is what we're living with. Now, I need y'all to pay attention to something because I think a lot of people miss this. This right here was cold-blooded. The judge said out his mouth, Basically, that he believed that they are guilty of the crimes that they are being charged with. What does that mean, hood educated? Break it down to us. The judge is basically saying that, look, y'all did this. Y'all killed Julio Fulio, and y'all shot them other three people that was in the car with him. Not only that, but y'all planned the murder and y'all traveled all the way from Jacksonville to Tampa to kill this boy and that's what y'all did. That's what the judge is basically saying. Check it out. I'm finding that there is a substantial probability that all three defendants committed the dangerous crimes that they are charged with. Cold-blooded demonstration. I'm talking about, and he said that in the public. So the world heard that. Tampa Bay heard that. This is a judge. This is the officer of the court. This is a person who is trained to weigh facts. This person is trained to say, ah, you know what? I'm leaning more towards this way. Ah, I'm leaning more towards this way. Because the judge has the authority to say, you know what? Y'all ain't got enough. You know what I'm saying? I'm throwing this case out. Go get some more evidence and then bring this case back in front of me. But this judge said, no, nah, I believe that they did this. I believe that they, they are guilty of the crimes that they are charged with. That's what he's saying. That's tough. That's tough. When you are up to, you ain't even been to trial yet. And the judge is already saying that, hey, you know what? I believe y'all guilty. Y'all bet not have no bench trial. Y'all see what this judge are. Y'all, if y'all go to trial, y'all better have a jury. Y'all better not have no judge because this judge already letting y'all know that, hey, look, I believe y'all guilty. Period. So if he is a, a decision maker, and judges are decision makers. Whenever they go to the trial attorney or the trial judge, they're going to be like, yep, hey, I'm, my homeboy said they was guilty. I, I believe what he believed. You know, we like this here. We a part of our own gang. I believe what my homeboy believed. You bet not have no bench trial where it's just a judge being the decision maker. You better have a jury in hope, in hope. That you can persuade one of the jurors or a couple of the jurors to say, hey, you know what? We believe these guys are innocent. Because here it is. We got their attorney, or not their attorney, but we got Sean Gathright attorney. And she is making, to some, a strong argument. A lot of people are saying that, man, this argument that she's putting out there is very strong. And possibly can help release this boy. Check it out. Once again, there is no actual video or identifiable footage that shows that Mr. Gathright was pre physically present at Home Two Suites. Is that correct? Correct. Were you able to ascertain if my client, Mr. Gathright, was the one that actually purchased Don Julio? No. Um, so anybody could have been at that club and purchased it? Yes, of course. His phone was in a car that was tracked at these different places, but yet... My client was never seen getting in and out of that car and was never identified as a person who was a shooter. 
Hey, y'all heard what she said. His phone was in the car, but there's no evidence of him going in the car, getting out of the car. There's no, there's no evidence of somebody identifying him as one of the shooters. Cold-blooded, right? I'm talking about, man, this is true. There has not been someone that can identify Sean, uh, the Murphy brothers, as the shooters. There's nobody that is saying, hey, that guy right there, I seen pull the trigger. Yep, Sean Gathright. Uh, 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 Rashad Murphy. Uh, Davion Murphy. Those are the three guys I seen pulling the trigger that night. There's nobody who said that, and there's nobody who possibly can say that unless they are with the plan. Other than that, they have nobody that can say that. So she has a good argument, but let me show y'all something. Let, let me show y'all how that argument, that good argument can be obliterated in the courtroom can be destroyed in the courtroom because we got to understand something if she is making the argument that no one can identify him as being the shooter and that there's no one that can say that he was jumping in and out of that car then she needs to prove to us where he was during the time of the killing it's that simple. If you are saying that Sean Gathright didn't shoot nobody and that that wasn't him shoot, then where was he? We need some people that will come forward and say, hey, no, he was with us that, at that time, the time that the shooting was going on. We need some video footage, right? I'm talking about with all the cameras around right now. I mean, like, come on. You, gotta, you can't just say that that wasn't him when they got all type of evidence proving that he did get in that car because we got the mama cameras showing him getting in the car. Not only that, they got the phone showing that it was tracking Julio Fulio and that it left his mama house and went to Tampa. You see what I'm saying? Not only that, they got the bullets attaching him to the murder and to the attempted murder of Julio Fulio. You see what I'm saying? We got to understand something. These, when it comes to trials, it ain't no uh, white and black. This stuff right here is like baking a cake. Circumstantial. Like you, it comes with a whole lot of stuff. You know, a cake just don't become a cake. You need eggs, flour, vanilla extract. You need milk. You need heat. You need a pot to put it in. You need the cream to throw it. You see what I'm saying? Like you need all these things. This is baking the cake. And that's what happens within a trial. It's just not cut and dry. It's not white and black. It's circumstantial. You come up with a whole bunch of stuff, and then you say, voila, here we go. We got the cake. Here go the truth right here. And that's what's happening in this case right here. If she's trying to say that no one can identify him, then tell us where he was. You can't just, you can't just take him out of the car. Then who was that then? You got to put somebody in the car. If you want to completely exonerate your client, then you need to say it wasn't him. It was him right here. He the one that did it. It wasn't Sean. It was this boy right here. And we got evidence to prove to you that it was this boy right here and not Sean. Sean was at the club. We got video footage of Sean at the club. You can't, if you going to exclude, exclude him, you got to prove it. You got to prove it. Just like the prosecuting attorney is finna prove that that boy was in that car. They got the video footage of him getting in the car. His phone. He using that phone. Uh, he Him going through his Instagram, texting people and stuff like that. Uh, the bullet casing. It's just too much that's putting him there. Too much. Uh, the ring camera. You see? It's too much putting him there his car his mama's car that they seen him drive off it's too much putting him in tampa you got to exclude him you got to exonerate him by saying that he was not in tampa here is where he was look he was swimming uh he was in a sauna um he was at the hotel he was at a casino you can't just say that he wasn't there. It don't work like that. And the prosecutor is going to eat that up. If that's if that, if that that's her argument, if that's all she got, obliterate it. 
he going to kill that or she going to kill that. That's nothing. That's a weak argument. It appears to be strong, but it can get chopped down. And just like I just broke it down and chopped it down and I'm not even a prosecutor, you can imagine what a professional that's been doing this for years is going to do. It's going to eat that joint alive. Now, before I depart, allow me to say this right here. There's something strange going on in the case. Where is Rashad Murphy? Where is he at? Now, y'all, I done, I'm talking about, look, man, I done did my research. And I'm talking about, when I look him up in Duval County in Jacksonville, it don't even say that this man is being charged with murder. It say that this man is locked up for a traffic ticket. This man has not been transferred over into Tampa, Hillsborough County. He's not been, and I'm trying to think to myself, like, what's the hold up with him? Why he ain't being transferred? He one of the killers, according to the reports. He one of the shooters, according to reports. Why haven't he been visualized on camera? Just like we just seen them three going in there looking all worried and sick. And I'm talking about... They already too thin to win, so you the man, they can't lose no more weight than they already got. They already look like they about to disappear. So here it is. Where this boy at? Like, why we ain't got no eyes on him? Why is he still in Duval County? It's just fishy. It just, it don't seem right to me. Now, y'all remember, I did that video a while ago when they called him, and I said, this boy right here already talking. He doing too much talking as it is. So is there a reason why that they keeping him separated? Now, I'm, look, let me just tell y'all how it go when you got co-defendants. And when one of your co-defendants is snitching on you, keep separate. I don't know what they call it uh, and where y'all from, whatever, but in, in Minnesota, it's keep separate. Um, if you're on the case with somebody, there's three of y'all on the case, one of y'all decide to flip and start telling on people and stuff like that, telling on the other two, then you ought to, they got to keep you separate from the two guys. So while you in the county sitting here fighting this case, they're going to keep this other person in a whole nother county jail. Or they're going to keep him like in, in the hole or a whole nother pod or deck or whatever, you know, so that y'all could never interact with each other. And when it's time to go to court and stuff like that, because y'all court usually be on the same day. When it's time to go to court, he going to be in a whole nother, you know, bull pen or whatever y'all call it. He going to be in his own little section while y'all in regular population. He's not going to be there. Now, is that a possibility? It could be. Because it doesn't make any sense to me why he's not over there with them. You see all three of them together, but you don't see Rashad. You don't see him. And I'm talking about he's still over in Duval County, but it don't even say that he's charged with murder. This is weird. This is strange. Now, it, could it be just possible that they just ain't ready to move him yet? Yeah, it could be that too. But I just, I just got to give it to y'all and, and break it down to y'all about like how things go when you on a, when you on a case with multiple peoples and one of the people decide to flip. They're going to keep that person that's snitching away from everybody else. That's just how it go. And that's how it appears. I'm not saying that's what's happening. I'm just saying that, but that's how it appears. For all my guys that done been in their life and all that, get in the comments and let these people know that's how it go. So that's what it appears like. Because I'm going to tell y'all, just like they got all three of them down there in Hillsborough County right now, that boy right there supposed to be right there beside him. But he ain't for some reason. And that right there is another reason for you young brothers and you young sisters to not even get involved in that type of stuff. Because a lot of the times when there's more than one person on the case, when there's four, five people on the case, people start breaking down like old Delta 88s. They just get the ah, crumbling. And when they crumble, they start telling. They start telling the truth about everything hey man look we was planning the case way before this they just get to talking about everything 
And so to avoid all that type of stuff, to avoid people crumbling on you and telling on you and testifying on you and stuff like that, don't do crime. Avoid it. Do something better with your time. Do something constructive with your time. It's so many ways out here to get money. It's a shame. It's a shame. You got people standing on the corner with things. I'm talking these boys are getting hundreds. Just standing on the corner talking about some, I'm hungry. I ain't had nothing to eat in five days. They ain't committing no crimes. They ain't going to jail. I'm not saying that you do that, but I'm just saying, though. I mean, instead of, you know, doing things that's going to get you potentially sent to jail or potentially get you killed, there's better things that y'all can do with y'all time. This is hood educated, not lame related. Peace and love, and y'all take care of yourself out there. If I said anything that caused you to think, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And if you're feeling generous, please make a small donation to the channel. Now, before I depart, allow me to give a shout out to some of the blessings that I received this week. Allow me to give a shout out to uh, Just In Time for the $1.99 super thanks. Thank you. Ray Carl Brown for the $5 super thanks. Thank you. Last One E 54 for the $10 super thanks. Thank you. Julian Hunter for the $9.99 super thanks. Thank you. Um... Big Four 14 for the $10 Super Thanks. Thank you. Uh, K Spa for the $1 Cash App. Thank you. Swerve for the $1 Cash App. Thank you. Emmanuel Scott for the $5 Cash App. Thank you. Jeffrey for the $10 Cash App. Thank you. Lloyd Diggs for the $7 Cash App. Thank you. Tangela. Dang, that's cold. It's almost like Angela. I got a cousin named Angela. But uh, Tangela Powell for the $10 cash app. Thank you. Anastasia Carter for the $10 cash app. That's another one of those names. Anastasia. It's just something about like these type of names that how, um, you know, our people, like we just, you know, we, we, we're real creative with these names. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, hey, Anastasia Carter for the $10 cash app. Appreciate you, sis. And last but not least, brown sugar for the $10 cash out. This is hood educated, not lame related. Peace and love. And y'all take care of yourself out there.